Hey, what's going on everybody and a warm welcome back to the Whiskey Cove. And on today's episode, we have three spectacular bourbons to drink through blind. And we try to find out which is the best Russells. This is gonna be great, run the video. All right then folks, let's get straight into this video. So I've been mentioning this blind for quite a while and the time has finally came. So we have three Russell's whiskies here and let's go through them and see what we have. We have the Russell's Reserve Single Rick House. Uh, this is matured on floors three and four at Camp Nelson C. The ABV on this is 56.2%. MSRP or what I paid for this was about $300. MSRP is about 250 Anything but first for this is a failure. Last is going to make me question things. Uh, next up, we have Russell's Reserve 13. Uh, this is coming in at 57.4%, so quite similar to the Camp Nelson. Uh, 13 years of age. This is a not age stated. I believe it's not age stated. Yeah, it's not age stated. And then with the Russell's Reserve 13 MSRP, or what I paid for it, I paid about 80 bucks for it, which is considerably less than this guy. And then the most cheapest of the three, we have a Russell's Reserve single barrel pick. This is coming in at 11 year old single barrel pick. So this is the oldest one I have, which is why I wanted to use it. The ABV on this is 55%. So if you think about it, there's only 2.5% between all of them. So I think this is pretty, you know, it's a pretty even matchup in terms of age and proof so what we'll do we're gonna get these whiskey into glasses and for a special occasion like this we need a special glass and we're pulling out the whiskey cove space I taster so as you can see it's laser coated with the whiskey cove on the front there if you want one of these go check us out down in the description the whiskey cove .square site and head on over to the shop where you can find some fantastic prices on these glasses with that being said these are all unopened bottles so they're all gonna be fresh cracks which makes it an even contest there as well so we'll crack open the bottles we'll get the whiskey in the glasses we'll get them blind mixed up by my wife and then we will get into this tasting Ooh. all right then folks and we are back the whiskey is poured the bourbon is poured in the glasses they have been mixed up and I have no idea which is which so just a reminder, we have Fort Nelson Camp C, we have Russell's 13, and we have a Russell's 11 year old single barrel here. And just standing here, I get loads of barrel char rickhouse notes. This is gonna be an excellent blind. So we will go from your left to your right, and we will go glass one, two, and three. And also as well, for you watching at home, a few folks have asked, uh, I'll mention maybe put in the glass of whiskey that I'm drinking up on the screen so you can see what I'm tasting. If that's something that you would like, uh, let us know down in the description or just like the video and I'll do a percentage based upon the likes. So glass one, let's get straight into it. Some beautiful, beautiful barrel char. I can just smell the barrel char from all of these whiskeys and it is beautiful. Definitely getting some of that dusty rickhouse, like I was saying in the beginning there. And definitely a little bit of spice on the palate here. Russell's and Wild Turkey generally have a little bit of spice, so I'm probably gonna get that from a lot of these. Maybe like some cherry blossom there as well, like the cherry blossom flower, or uh, the cherry blossom tree, I should say. A real nice, like a darker molasses sweetness running through it. Some, some of the real darkness of it some real darker, sweeter notes with this. And maybe a touch of chocolate there as well. Maybe like some cherries that have been dipped in dark chocolate. Very appetizing, very welcoming. Let's go in for a taste glass one. Very thick and viscous on the mouthfeel. That's something that really stood out. This is the thickest, uh, oiliest whiskey I've tasted for a very long time really nice on the palate there as well you do get some of that spice coming through plenty of those oak wood notes it's got a really beautiful oak presence with that it, and it's there every sip that you take and it's also quite dry on the mouth towards the finish there as well there's a little bit of heat here but like i said the the, the lowest abv is 55 percent so if that is this one or higher, I'm very surprised at how easy this is to drink. Very sweet, again, on the palate. Maybe a little bit more of like a mapley wood era flavor there with that there. Let's go in for another taste on glass one. There's a lot of wood there. 
maybe a touch of like espresso bean coffee with that chocolate note there from the beginning but i just can't get over just how oily this is on the mouth it's beautiful you know there's a, a lot of age in this whiskey or at least that's what it tastes like there's probably a lot of age in all three of them i can't remember if i was able to find an age for the camp nelson see when i talked about it in whiskeys to look out for if i know the age of the camp nelson wherever it may be i'll pull it up on screen right now so so far an excellent start and hopefully it'll get better because if it does we're talking about potentially best whiskeys of the year right now so that was glass one let's go into glass two after we do the power check all right this is glass two This one's definitely a little bit more lighter on the nose as, as opposed to the first one. The first one was more woody, darker flavors. This is a little bit more flowery. Definitely more sweeter, more of a, like a candy cane sweetness. Maybe like a touch of apricot there as well. And I'm, I'm getting a little, maybe a touch more proof off this one. I'm not saying it's hot. But I'm saying it in my nose just a little with a little bit of heat there as well. Again, a very appetizing nose like glass one. Not as much wood on this one. There was an abundance of oak on the first one. I'm get, still getting some barrel char on this, but it's just nowhere near the amount I was getting on glass one. I'm not saying glass one was over oaked. I really like that note, but this one is a little bit more tame in that aspect. More heat, less wood notes. Okay, let's go in for a taste. This is glass number two. So even though glass two didn't have more wood notes on the nose, there was definitely more of a tannin feel when it comes to the mouth feel there. It was definitely drying out my mouth and clenching it a lot more than glass one. So even though I was getting more of a sweeter nose that didn't quite trans uh, transcend through to the palate, it's definitely more of a drier palate there not really that much spicy as well if i'm go uh, if i'm honest that apricot kind of uh, note does kind of come through as well uh, it's more of kind of like a dehydrated apricot i guess at this point because that sweetness has almost gone away let's go for another taste on glass two so after the second taste on glass two i'm definitely getting an abundance and i mean an abundance of cherry it's almost quite overwhelming there it's more of like when you get down to the cherry stone if you're accidentally chewing a little bit you get like a drier woodier note from the cherry stone but you still are left with a lot of that cherry flavor it's kind of like that because it is getting so dry i don't want to say that this one is over oaked you definitely <clears throat> get in a lot of that oak presence uh, and those tannins are quite take, are taking over quite a lot there. We'll see how it stands up going back the other way, but that is a noticeable difference in the palette on the second one than the first one. So that was glass two. Reset the palette and then we'll go into glass three. Okay, this is glass three. Hmm. I might just get the slightest touch of caramel peanut on this one caramel peanut brittle it's definitely another sweeter nose and you are getting some wood presence there as well not picking up any heat on the nose it's, it's tamed off a little bit from the second one and i am getting some like now we've gone back to those cinnamon bacon spices like a little bit of aniseed cinnamon cardamom that sort of thing here Maybe a, bit, a little bit of a herbal note there as well. Okay, this is glass three. Let's go in for a taste here. So on glass three, it has a really great mouthfeel just starting off there. It's really sweet, really nice, really oily. But again, some of those woodier notes take over and then completely dry it out. I'm getting like some more tobacco and there's just something going on in there. I'm definitely getting like a peanut, I'm guessing, definitely getting that caramel peanut brittle note again, again. But sometimes when you eat a peanut, when you just crack it out of the shell and it's got this kind of like husk it's coated in and you chew that, sometimes you can just get like a little bit of bitterness from that hull. And I'm kind of getting that here because it's kind of coming from the wood aspect of this here. Get, still getting some cherry on the palate there. But it just kind of dries out and gets a little bit spicy at the end as you would expect with that you know an, an older bourbon let's go in for another taste on glass three so again i'm coming back to some maybe some of those coffee notes this one is coming across actually quite bitter 
which sometimes you can associate with over oaked whiskey, which why a lot of time when whiskey starts getting a little bit older, bourbon specifically, to like 15 years, 18 years, uh, you generally don't see bourbon at barrel proof at that age because it can come across quite bitter or, or I guess that's what people associate with being over oaked. But these are not as old as like 15 or 18, but they are quite high in proof, probably a barrel strength or cast strength. So you're probably gonna take on a little bit more of that bitterness there. Uh, and, but that, what I'm saying is that's definitely coming across on glass three and a little bit was coming across on glass two as well. But what we'll do is we'll reset the palette on these ones and then we will taste back through them again and then we'll come back and then we'll have them in an order for you folks at home. All right then folks, and we are back. And with much deliberation as per usual, we have them in an order. So there was a clear winner, and then second and third was a little bit more difficult to figure out. But we did, uh, after a lot of time, settle on these. So they were all pretty damn good. Like I said, some had a little bit of bitterness there as well. I'm seeing if that's gonna open up after a couple of weeks there, but I like aged bourbons. Um, and then they're also quite spicy as well, or at least two of them are. So if you're someone who prefers a spicier bourbon, a spicier aged bourbon, these are gonna be right up your street there. So with that being said, let's find out the answers. Where did the answer go? Here we go. Okay, so last place for me was glass three. And let's find out what glass three was. That was square. Okay, so we, my wife has mixed it up a little bit. So that was square, and that was Russell's single barrel. So that was the OG kind of 11 year single barrel. It's quite strange actually, because potentially these two, I don't know what they are yet, but we know that they're not that. Uh, we're, are older than this one but this was tasting kind of like the more aged the oaky so that was an interesting uh i was thinking this might have been the 13 just because of that so this was distilled in 2011 and then bottled in 2022 in november for you folks at home there this came from warehouse f4 so then we move on to second place which is this middle one here again you know i went first second and third i drunk back through them a bunch of times and it wasn't just the order that they were it, it just kind of lay, laid like that so number two was second and that is we went with triangle this time and this is russell's 13. so i kind of put that down as maybe uh, uh maybe was gonna win this and for folks at home who are in tune with uh the russell's batches this is and if i look at the laser code here so the laser code on this is LLJL, which I believe is the second batch of the 13. So maybe that's some information for you folks at home. I felt like this, yes, this was aged, but interestingly enough, it tasted less oaked than the 11 year, which is quite peculiar there. It had some really nice cherry and apricot notes there and some wood to boot, but it just was nowhere near as good as the first glass. And let's make sure we have this correct. That is a circle, which is a single rick house. So, single rick house is the winner. And I've been asking this question for weeks and weeks and weeks. Uh, could the single barrel cause a bit of an upset? Is this and Camping Nelson seat worth the money? It was considerably better than the other two are off friends. These were quite close. In the end, I, was, I wasn't a big fan of the kind of bitter peanutness that came off the single barrel. Uh, and that's why I went with a 13 over it. But this, the mouthfeel on this was sensational. It was so well balanced because you had a heavy oak presence, but the, the sweetness run through the whole thing and combated that longer, as opposed to maybe the sweetness on these two that kind of nose dives straight away. And then you were left with the bitterness of the oak. So we asked the question, which Russells is the best out of these three? Well, it's the Camp Nelson one. Would I pay $300 for this again? Absolutely not. And I don't even know why I paid $300 for it in the first place. However, I bought it and it is a fantastic and great whiskey. If for whatever reason you can get it cheaper than that, definitely pick it up. Try it at a bar it's a, if it's a reasonable price, but it is a phenomenal whiskey and something 
that could potentially be in the running of the Whiskey of the Year for the Whiskey Bowl 2023. So, as we say on this channel, as we drink through the world's whiskies one glass at a time, Camp Nelson for $325 out the door was the winner. Cheers.